now up 6-5 as there's Kafanikov entering the arena right next door to us here. But inside, Louis Armstrong, Taylor Dent needs to hold serve here to keep this first set going. Set point for Gonzalez. Dent serving. Second serve. That is clutch. I mean, we commented how he's not match tough. Just his third hard court match of the summer to come up with that second serve. Five, six down in the breaker after he hardly made a play on Gonzalez's two points on his serve. Uncorks 109 mile an hour second serve. Right in the corner, not just the pace, but the belief to be able to place it exactly where you want. That's what Pete Sampras did so well here for so many years, winning five championships here, 14 majors in total. Six all in the tie break, Dent serving top of your screen. So now a set point for Dent. Center service line judge not in position. <laughs> Set point saved. I'll tell you, with a storm coming, the winds are blowing pretty hard to just swing away at an overhead like that. Set point down. We're seeing a fun tie break here. Both men standing up well under the pressure of his first set. Well, that's why people enjoy watching this guy, Gonzalez. He will just swing away no matter the situation. Seven off, tie break. <laughs> Case in point. Set point number two for Gonzalez. Let's see. Are both his feet off the ground? I think you're gonna be way oh. off as he just clobbers this one. It's almost like a forehand overhead. <sighs> second set point for Gonzalez. This time on another second serve. It will Taylor Dent be as brave and be able to execute on the second serve? Shall see. Answers yes, 102 mile an hour. Gave him a chance on the pass. Dent not with a very sharp forehand volley. Those are tense volleys at any time, particularly at 7 8 in a breaker. Gonzalez with a chance with a forehand pass down the line. He wasn't able to pull it off. Dent has saved two set points for Gonzalez. Now he's trying to earn his own second set point of the tiebreak. It's wide. And Dent does indeed have another set point. Still very humid out here. The behind this front is supposed to be better air. Nine eight. Gonzalez serving. Nine all. As they change ends, it would behoove me to remind you, the U.S. Open viewer, that the top seed, Andre Agassi, is coming up next. Getting ready with Jenny Kafelnikov on the other side of the net for the afternoon. Agassi hitting, getting ready on Ash. He's got good footwork to handle the wind well, Andre. Positions himself nicely. Meanwhile, back here at Louis Armstrong, Matchup living up to the billing so far between two hard hitters. Nine all, first set tiebreak. <laughs> That's out. Set point number three. Each player has won 43 points in this long and crucial first set. First of the set points on serve. And here's Dent with a golden opportunity to take this first set. Takes a little extra time. Oh. 
pulls. He does it. Takes the first set tie break, 11-9. And Dent, one set up on the 15th seed. Dent fired up over the prospect of the early lead. Andre Agassi still to come, too. We've got it all for you. Couldn't, couldn't return it, though. Well, now we're in Louis Armstrong Stadium where Taylor Dent and Fernando Gonzalez, the seeded player from Chile, are locked up in a terrific battle. Two tie breaks. The first one went to Dent 11 9. Gonzalez won the second set breaker 7 3. Now, when they came back out after the rain delay, it was 5 all, and they, they traded breaks of serve, surprisingly. Both of these guys served so big. But they traded breaks and then went into the tie break, and it was. Pretty much an easy run for Gonzalez. And for those of you who've been watching the U.S. Open during the daytime coverage on CBS and are wondering, the Andre Agassi Yevgeny Kafelnikov match will not be finished tonight. Uh, those, those guys will come back tomorrow, Kafelnikov and Agassi, and play around 1 o'clock. We see the Gonzalez information from Santiago, hardest hitting player on the tour. Over the uh, wrist injuries, Jim, do you think Taylor Dent? He is. Taylor Dent uh, did not play this summer before the U.S. Open. He went to defend his title in Newport, Rhode Island on the grass just the week after Wimbledon and had a wrist injury there, which kept him out of action until the U.S. Open. So uh, kudos to Taylor Dent for making it out into the third round. And potentially this could be a match that will get him into the second week of a Grand Slam for the first time. And a throwback player with uh, the serve and volley style is always nice to see on tour. <laughs> Taylor Dent will not stay at the baseline on his serve. He is in on everything. There's a quick peek at their draw. And Dent Gonzalez waiting the winner of that Agassi Kafelnikov. So these guys, you know, Ted, that's a disadvantage for Agassi and Kafelnikov not to be able to complete their match tonight. I, I was surprised, Jim, were you? Well, I was in the locker room, actually, and, and Andre and Yevgeny were sitting on the training table right next to me, and they were stunned. They could not believe it when Brian Early, the tournament director, walked in and said, all right, you guys are done. You're coming back tomorrow, not before one. Said, what? What are you talking about? Do the players get any input, Jim, into this at all? Uh, Generally? Un unfortunately, no. Um, and there was very little explanation from Early other than to say this is standard procedure. We have a night session with ticket holders, and uh, we can't have uh, the people in the stadium and hold those people outside, the ticket holders, from the evening while the day session fans watch you guys finish with the weather situation. So a little bit of business at the U.S. Open uh, is a problem for well, Agassi. Definitely for Agassi, no yeah. question. Yeah. Looking at the prospect of three straight days of play. But the good news, tennis underway tonight in New York. Okay, Bill, well, we're back here in Louis Armstrong. Gonzalez serving now at 40 30. On serve, third set. So, what we have right now is everything that was in progress when the rain struck mid afternoon is being resumed, with, except for the Agassi Kafelnikov match. And the bad news, Ted, is as you pointed out, the winner of that Agassi Kafelnikov match will have to play three days in a row. But the good news is that they're in the top half of the draw, so they still have that extra extra day that the bottom half doesn't have towards the end of the tournament. A little bit of rest.
All right, Jim, you mean the Wednesday quarter and then a Correct. Saturday set. Thank you for clarifying right. that. Now, break All point. Right. Gonzalez going for the target there, trying to take Dent out with that passing shot. And a big Vamos with his eighth ace. <laughs> Now, this is a guy that most players hate to play, Fernando Gonzalez, because he plays mind-numbing tennis. And what I mean when I say that is that this guy never thinks about what he's going to do. He's a reacting player, just swings away, and he hits it as hard as he can almost every time. You had a great description of what it's like, the dilemma in playing it. Why don't you remind me? Which is uh, really that, that you're at not in control. He's yeah. in control. You're completely at the mercy of, of what he's doing. A lot of the point, well, most of the points when you play Gonzalez, he's finishing one way or the other with either a winner or mm -hmm. an error. I mean, he's, his numbers on the winner and error side are usually huge in comparison to his opponent. But oddly, not in this match. No. Well, Taylor Dent's such an attacking player that he gets his numbers up there in the stat department as well. I mean, he's chipping and charging on everything, almost kamikaze-like. So two all now in the third set. Gonzalez, the Chilean who developed that all-out style as a, as a junior by playing older players all the time who back in those days would moonball him to death. Right. And he gets so angry, he just wanted to finish points. Well, he certainly figured a way how, how, yeah. how to do that, didn't he? And Ted, both of these players have been scratching with their feet on the lines where the moisture would, would go first. And just making sure that the court is actually not slippery. You know, Taylor Dent's game is, is no picnic to play either as an opponent. But for those people who've been saying that, that uh, serving volley tennis is dying, Taylor Dent is here to bring it back to life. You're saying Dent's not fun to play because just the constant attacking? Constant pressure. If you're a baseline player, it's, it's not a lot of fun to play because he shortens all the points up and, and it's tough to get, with either player, it's really difficult to get rhythm out here. They don't allow you to have any rhythm. And I love 30. Nice job dipping that ball and then dipping the passing shot by Gonzalez. Ooh, Gonzalez held him and then broke for the side and Dent hit it there anyway. 15-30. side, Gonzalez stands well back to receive the second serve, but cutting the angle off slightly in the ad court, the backhand. Mm. And that's the tenth double fault off the racket of young American Taylor Dent. Now double break point out on Lewis Armstrong Stadium. Third round action here at the U.S. Open. Ten double faults. How about 15 aces? Saves the first one. Oh. 
Double fault again. And Taylor Dent down a break in the third set. We'll be right back. We're going to get Todd Martin and Robbie Ginepri going here in about five minutes on Ash Stadium, which is uh, the reason that uh, I ducked out for a second there because they had the national anthem. So well done, Jim. <laughs> and unfortunately for Taylor Dent, two breaks and he suffered in this match on double faults. Yeah, he breaking himself there with a couple double faults. And uh, the players right now looks like they're waiting for a supervisor, Ted, to come out and perhaps check the court. Well, we saw a sunset, but maybe they're feeling a drop or two on the court. Doesn't well, you look like they want to play, huh? Well, you know, let's see if I can explain this without getting too technical. The court, the lines are a little bit slippery in comparison to the rest of the court. You'll see the, the chair umpire here checking the lines. And certainly they don't want to risk injury with the players sliding and, and possibly hurting themselves. But because there's a little more texture to the actual green surface out there, it doesn't stay as wet there. Trust me, people. Just trust me on that one. Well, as we've seen, anyone who's watched the Open through the years, it's about three drops of rain and, and play gets stopped just for the safety of the players. Yeah. It is the kamikaze style because there's nothing on that approach shot. That's just hit and hope. Well, really, Taylor Dent doesn't want to get into a conversation in the baseline with Fernando Gonzalez. He needs to be in it. That just needs a little more stick on those approach shots. Now, both players have. A decided advantage, far more winners than errors in this match. But Gonzalez trying to make one break of serve stick here in this third set. Yeah, Gonzalez has been broken twice in this match. up the break with a hold for 4-2. In this summer when Taylor Dent hurt his wrist, he did something that he probably needed to do. He hired a trainer and he used to work with Justin Gimmelstab, Nick Anthony from Florida and flew him out to California. He couldn't hit tennis balls, but he knew he needed to continue to work on his fitness, which has been a bit of a problem for him. He's a tremendous athlete. He's very agile, Dent, but he's always been slightly overweight. And he's certainly been working diligently on that all year long. We're just moments away from. Todd Martin and Robbie Ginepri taking the court at Ash Stadium. All well, this match continues. Not Armstrong. Oh, and still to come after this will be the French Open champion Juan Carlos Ferrero. So he's going to wind up playing a night match. Now look how deep in the court Gonzalez is there. Trying to dip that ball down at the feet. When you're back that far, if you, if you don't get it down, obviously it's going to be point over, but you also have to charge back into the court to protect the drop volley. It's back there again. All right, so a hold for Dent. And now we're getting ready for action at Ash. Michael Barkham. All right, Teddy, with Robbie Ginepri, you're going to take the court against Todd Martin, and uh, this is only your second time under the lights. I haven't played here in a couple of years. What are your nerves like right now? Um, you know, fired up to go. I'm ready to uh, play. It's going to be a tough match, and I'm looking forward to it. What do you expect from Todd? 
Uh, Todd's going to be coming out uh, with everything, mixing it up, changing the height of the ball, moving me around, and it's going to be an interesting match. Have you talked to Minnie today about the match? Uh, a little in the morning, but uh, trying to stay focused. All right, best of luck. Thanks, Robbie. Robbie Ginepri, we're waiting for Todd Martin. We'll send it back up to you, Teddy, until Todd comes out. All right, Michael, Robbie Ginepri. So, <laughs> memory serves me right. I think he had a, a match as a wild card under the lights a couple of years ago, but a little different tonight because there's yeah. some hope, some expectation. That is correct. And how do you size that up, Jim? Well, I, you know, I think that the Todd Martin has a ton of experience, and I think if Todd Martin can dictate in that match and not be put on the run, that he's going to have a good shot. But if Robbie Ginepri gets turns that match into a little bit of a slugfest, I think that's going to be problems for the veteran because, because Robbie's very much uh, the fitter of the two players. And I think it is a good thing, actually, for Todd Martin that this match is being played at night because it was pretty hot and humid today before the rains came. And uh, I think it's it's going to be a good matchup. So there's the top half, and of course Ferrero and Chela will follow Dent and Gonzalez on the Armstrong court. Yeah, Ferrero Just, Chela could be a good one too. Yeah, Justine Enenardan is still to play tonight on the grandstand. Good by Gonzalez. Dan doesn't think so. While they sort it out, let's go back to Michael. All right. A few moments at Ash Stadium, and while they prepare for the warm-up, we'll go back inside Armstrong, where Taylor Dent serves now at 3-5 in the third. And there's a let. We'll have another first serve. So far back and just going for broke. That's what he does best. You see his profile, Taylor Dent, 50% on the first serve is obviously not good enough. And the guy can hit a return like that. And Gonzalo's Jim, that was his 23rd forehand winner <laughs> of the match. Now the biggest problem for Dent has been taking himself out with double faults when he's been down break point. You just have to make your opponent give him a chance to miss. I mean, Gonzalez is going to do one of two things. He's going to hit a winner or miss usually. Look at that. On, earlier this summer, Gonzalez beat Andre Agassi. And Agassi said afterwards, you know, I'd hate to go to sleep figuring I had to play like that to win matches every night. And I guess he's the quintessential percentage player, and Gonzalez, the antithesis of that. But sport's all about contrast. And I, and I think it's wonderful, to, entertaining at least, to watch a guy who plays this way. No doubt. I mean, it's not fun for Taylor Den, I understand that. <laughs> Watch that. Well, if you look around the stands, there are just a lot of people holding their jaws. Mm -hmm. They just can't believe the power this guy creates. Okay. So many people come out to watch the, these events. They, yeah, they love tennis, but they also want to see players do things that they could never do. And Fernando Gonzalez does that on virtually every point. Set point.
Taylor Dent's been to net 110 times, winning 60%. But he's lost two big points at net in this game. And that's a let serve. I'll get two. Dent and it's in. And with that, third set and the lead to Gonzalez. Now, Jim Curry with the update. And uh, 15 love now, Gonzalez and Taylor Dent, as you said, John, saving match point with a service winner and then hitting a off the charts half volley drop volley for a winner at Deuce and then holding serve. And Taylor Dent. Uh, Switching rackets, getting a fresh look, and trying to, to get a break over here. But it looks like another breaker is coming up. And moments ago on Louis Armstrong Stadium, this point is Fernando Gonzalez tried to hold serve to take a 6 5 lead in the fourth set, running his opponent, Taylor Dent around. And Dent showing some wheels here, but not quite enough. But look at the agility. Good ups for Taylor Dent. But Gonzalez holds. Dent will be serving to stay in this for the tie break. Dent serving. Got the first point. Yeah, double fault by Gonzalez. A little donation early. And the fans are getting pumped over here. The daytime crowd with some bonus coverage. Yeah, most people don't know. I mean, certainly a lot of tennis people know this, but a lot of other fans perhaps don't know that. Taylor Dent's father was the top 20 player in the world. And not often do you see the son be as successful. Right here's Jeanette bringing for love. Taylor Dent drawing the arrow with the throat shot there. And now I understand uh, Jim Courier, tell me if I'm wrong, that uh, Taylor's being coached by Brad Stein, your old coach, that right? That is correct, yes. And seems to have settled Taylor down. Well, you know what it's done. Brad Stein is a, is a pretty good taskmaster, and, and he's brought some focus into Taylor Dent's game. Taylor Dent is, is uh, John, he's very talented, and he's been... Uh, not afraid to work hard, but he hasn't worked hard off the court. He, he likes to stay on the court, and frankly, he's needed to get in better shape for years. Robbie Ginepri is held, by the way, to 6 5. <laughs> Taylor Dent, this is pretty good effort considering the fact that he injured his wrist at Wimbledon. Has, this is his first tournament since Wimbledon. That's right. And he's trying to get to the uh, fourth round of a slam. This will be the first time he'd make it into the second week. And it looks like, folks, Barring a big surprise here that we are headed to a fifth set. Mm -hmm. Good. We'll see in this fifth set if conditioning does become an issue. Well, the advantage for Dent, if it, if it is a factor, I think Gonzalez is in better shape, but with that rain delay, it's more like playing a couple matches in one day. Also, Dent is really a classic. These are few and far between. He might Tyrannosaurus Rex here, a true <laughs> serve volley, attacking player. It's good to see that it still exists on the tennis tour. Still gets a set point, but now he's serving for it. Not yet. Mm. That's a great play and point by Fernando Gonzalez. Look at this on the full run. Dance is trying to take this to a fifth. The crowd is loving it. They understand how big this point is. A dense serve. Oh, 
That's big. 22nd ace, Ted. Oh. And John, get ready. He's been to net 151 times already. <laughs> John Scott. Our longtime colleague Barry McKay would call this the all important 3 4 game, wouldn't he? Well, they're all important now, <laughs> late into this fifth set. Neither player has had a break point in this set, but I, I think that Dent's the one who's feeling a little bit better. He fought off a match point in the fourth set. And Gonzalez has actually sort of tanked a couple points when he's been down 40 love in this set on Dent's serve. So it's four all, fifth set on Armstrong. This was turned into a nice night in New York. A view of the Empire State Building from the airships of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company, reminding you to take all of your journeys on the wings of Goodyear. Now, Taylor Dent's trying to do two things he's never done before make the second week of a slam and win a five set match. 0 for 3 lifetime in five setters. This would be sweet, a sweet payout for doing all the hard work, getting himself in better condition. You can't fake it in the fifth set. Your body lets you know. Well, this actually worked out to his benefit because he hurt his wrist, so he couldn't play tennis. But it, as Jim pointed out, his coach Brad Stein you know, works him out hard, got the legs strong. He hasn't played any matches, yet he's on the verge of a huge win. Here's, there. well, there's another one. Yeah. He just didn't even try. It's sort of automatic at 40 love. Fernando Gonzalez serving. 4-5, fifth set. That's about as long a point as you'll see Taylor Dent play. It's Gonzalez who badly mishits that first forehand. Okay, that's lose the, the point. Tell you, that's the first time in a while Taylor Dent's won the first point on a Gonzalez service game. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On serve, still an ash in the second set. 3-2 Martin. Better believe he's going to be coming in on this second serve. Ooh, he didn't have to. Even better. Two points. Those double faults were costly to dead earlier. Could it be a gift for him here at the end? that he chose to hit that in the air. And that's risky. That's Gonzalez. But that's, you got that right. Twice in that point, Taylor Dent doing a 360 after retrieving a shot. All right, Jim, does he go, does he go down firing away here, Gonzalez? He only knows one way. There's no patty cake. He could have let that bounce and hit it, you know, hit it as hard as he wanted.
Now look at the emotion. Would we say that's his biggest win? Oh, incredible for Taylor Dent. This is biggest win of his career. Second week of the Grand Slam. Well, this was not an American that was on the front page coming to New York. He's pushing his way there, isn't he? Talked about the Taylor Dent potential for a long time and how dangerous he is and could be. Betty Ann Stewart, his mom was a tennis player. His father, Australian, top 20 player. And here he is in round of 16 of the U.S. Open. It's just desire, heart. That's what Boris Becker always used to say. Fifth set, look at that leap there. Jim, you've worked so much with Taylor Denham Davis Cup. What do you think this means to him right now? Oh, this is just a sweet payoff for him, putting in the time and the effort. I mean, he wants it, but he didn't really know how to get there before he hooked up with Brad Stein and all the work coming at the right time. It's not going to get any easier. No, it doesn't, <laughs> but you know what? At the, when you're ranked in the 70s and you make the fourth round, there's just all upside for Taylor Dent right now. What a confidence booster.